research and discovery. Futurists. The offices, shopping centers and homes of the future should be clean and green. Buildings that incorporate innovative and intelligent design to keep energy use to a minimum. Today, more than half the population lives in cities, and that will increase, which means cities and energy consumption is a central theme of the future. Buildings are consuming almost half of the energy of a country. So if you solve the energy problem of buildings, that means you are going to solve the energy problem of a country. Ursula Eicher and Zerin Yilmaz are on a mission to make the cities of the future as energy efficient as possible. From their universities in Stuttgart and Istanbul, they're collaborating on a European Union research project mixing real-life case studies with laboratory modelling. Much of their work focuses on those symbols of city life, soaring glass-fronted office blocks. Those are high-rise and high-tech buildings having uh, very complicated automation systems, but still uh, there are so many possibilities to reduce the energy consumption through different kinds of passive strategies. Passive systems help keep buildings the right temperature without relying on power-hungry machines. Here at Stuttgart Technical University, these fierce lamps simulate the sun beating down on an office window. Keeping the room inside cool is more difficult than keeping it warm. When you talk about heating, we know how to do it well. We wrap them up well, we insulate it well, good windows, and you have no problem. Especially with offices, there are so many computers, lighting, people, things that generate heat. But how do we keep these buildings cool in summer, even in Germany, where the climate is not that hot? It's a problem. The system allows the researchers to test different types of shading systems in a controlled environment. We're not just examining sunshades, but entire systems. For example, here we have double facades, where behind the first facade there's a second skin. And there we examine the air flows, how much fresh air gets into the office. So we're not just investigating thermal and optical features, but also the airflow in such systems. German PhD student Tobias Schulze is working with his Turkish colleagues on a real-world example of urban development. In the wind tunnel is a model of Istanbul's newly built canyon center, a development that includes an office tower, shopping center and apartments. The flow of smoke helps him visualize how the skyscraper is affected by its environment. If there are other buildings in the neighborhood, they might have influence on the, on the building we are working on, so there might be turbulences of air and it's also depending on the wind direction. That's why we, we are not static, only put this model here like it is. We have to turn it around and view it from all directions. There are also tiny sensors in the model that can measure air pressure. Pressure distribution is important if you think about the ventilation of the building. On the windward side we have positive pressure, on the backward side we have negative pressure. This pressure difference of the two sides makes the air flow through the building, which might be useful for ventilation issues or also for cooling the building. Zerin's team has been working closely with building managers at Canyon and modeling has already helped them to use their lighting more efficiently. Now we are looking uh, the possibility for the possibility of the energy saving through natural ventilation mostly. And also we have uh, other research studies on this building for energy efficiency. For example, photovoltaic applications for electricity production from sun and uh, better shading devices for cooling energy saving and also uh, some parametric studies to see the relation between energy consumption and comfort. 
To have a clearer idea of how energy for cooling and heating will be used in an urban area, you need a global view, and that's the job of the artificial sky. Place a model inside to see how different surfaces would pass from light into shade over the course of a day. The high power lamp simulates the sun and the luminescence of the dome can also vary to better imitate reality. The sky is never equally bright. You usually have brighter patches just around the sun. The horizon is brighter, and we have to be able to recreate that situation realistically, to be able to say that there is enough light in this building. The artificial sky was used to study this site, Scharnhauser Park near Stuttgart. The researchers examined how the distance between buildings affects the amount of sun they receive. The area is full of energy-saving initiatives, including this office. In its basement is an absorption chiller which transforms heat from the local biomass plant into cooling liquid piped through the floors. It uses weather forecasts to regulate indoor temperatures. Scharnhauser Park is unusual. Achieving energy efficiency on a large scale demands careful planning. You have to find the best solution during the design stage and you have to test different design scenarios of the building to find the best solution for energy efficiency. If you can find the best solution, there is 50% energy saving possibility for these kinds of buildings and it's a huge amount because they are consuming a lot of electricity and natural gas for heating, cooling, lighting and so on. These researchers are learning how to best apply techniques such as passive cooling and natural ventilation in real-life, large-scale urban situations. <laughs> but energy efficiency isn't simply a scientific and technical question, it's also a social challenge. Building standards are quite high nowadays, but once they're in place, their functioning is not optimal. Hardly anyone cares about whether building systems, cooling systems, are switched on and off at the right times. There's a lot of energy consumed for ventilation, which is unnecessary when hardly anyone is in the building. Lights are left on. It depends very much on the user, and he has to develop an awareness that he can actually save energy. And he must first be aware that he can also save energy. Developing truly energy-efficient city buildings also requires input from those that live and work in them. <laughs>